probably one of the easiest ways to go out and get a bunch of tight lines on really windy, tough days. Yeah, so you know what? Soul Strong Nation, we're going to call this deja vu because a couple years ago, you boys were here in April and we got punished by the weather and we did something very similar and it worked fantastic. So we tried it again this year. This time around, we got Power Prawn USA. USA, which is what Luke has right there. So Garrett. we're tucked in on a local bridge down here in Ala Mirada. It's blowing a solid 20 to 25 out of the east southeast. It's overcast, it's chilly, we're all in jackets and whatnot. We got the chum dinger out with a block of chum, and I got my man fishing. Power Prawn USA. Power Prawn USA Junior. Ooh, and all already, right. as soon as we got here, yeah, we've what already happened. Luke caught a couple of uh yeah, we got yellow jacks. yellow jacks, we've caught jack crevels, and uh, we've only been here 60 seconds. So we're looking forward to see what different species we can catch and a little bit of luck, maybe get a little break in the weather, maybe some sunshine, and Hollywood can at least take his jacket off. Woo! Maybe even a cold bush light. Ooh, it's oh, possible. Luke's on again, Luke's on again. This is the coolest part. We do have some live shrimp. Uh oh, you just oh, 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 mangrove Yo, get snapper. That in. Get that in. That's a nice one. That's a keeper right there. There's a fish sandwich in the making right there. We'll the let it. Power Prawn USA. I don't know that anything's going to touch the Power Prawn USA. You know I love Slam Shady, and I will use it here. That is mangrove snapper for but the win. Power Prawn USA is tough to beat. Ready for more. Nice. All right. Well, it's all strong nation. It makes my job easy. I don't have to bait hooks. <laughs> I got a, a well full a of live too. Got a well full of live shrimp. I got plenty of frozen, fresh frozen shrimp from the good old Blue Magic. But yet the boys are wearing out with the prawn. And Luke, that's the junior. Junior, yep. We got Richard up here making his first appearance in the Keys. What are you, what are you fishing with? Power Prawn USA. USA Junior. Uh, this is the full. The full of the big boy. All right. We'll see if he catches bigger fish or not. But we're right here near the bridge piling. Oh, there's anchored some up. egrets flying by. That's a good sign. Sure. Bird, we love birds. So we're talking about being down here, spring break, your family coming down, looking to go fishing. A lot of families bring their own boat, got lots of kids. You come down here and you get banged up with the weather and you're running out of options, but you want to get fishing. This is one that you can do. If you look down the bridge, you yep. on, you'll see there's a handful of guides all from here in Alamorada doing the same thing. Some might be trying to catch a tarpon. Some are fishing the pilings. Some are in skiffs, some are in bay boats, but at the end of the day, you're here to go fishing. The weather's not always your friend. Oh, Luke's on again. The gods do what we can to make this work. Another nice Ooh, another nice, nice mangrove. Dang. Yeah, these are keeper snapper here, kid. Ooh. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions, we've seen it a lot in the community, people have got their trip planned to the Keys, either usually Island Rod or Marathon are the two that we see the most, and they're like, where do I go to catch redfish and snook and trout? And it, it, even though it looks awesome, right? We have to say, it, the mangroves like, oh, there's got to be snook, and it's not here. You know, sad but true. We, it's hard to catch a snook this close to home. Almost all of the snook fishing we do is over towards Flamingo, and that's a solid hour boat ride away. It's give or take 30 miles across the bay through a whole maze of islands and shallow water. And if you don't know your way around, that's a big concern, and not to mention you're in the Everglades National Park, so you have to be careful with the rules, the licenses, the visitor passes, and all the things you're supposed to have. But here in the state water, close to home, the navigation part of this is relatively simple. And if the weather gets too bad and you're running out of having fun, you can always get back home. You're not too far, and there's plenty to catch right here. Now, with that being said, in the wintertime, if it gets really cold, you can sometimes catch a snook around the bridges here. Man, he is just on fire with the Power Prawn USA Junior. What do you got here? This is a Jackerville. So we've literally been fishing for five minutes now, and we've been getting constant bites. Actually, that's a horse eye jack. That's a horse eye jack. That's a different jack species there. That's a horse eye jack. I've never caught one of these before. Little different than the Jackerville. How do you tell the difference of a horse? Uh, with the big eye it has, and the big uh, the big forehead has a big bump in it. Huh. And they don't have nearly much yellow on the top like a Jack the Bell. We got yellow jacks for now. Yeah, we're three types of jacks and keeper mangroves already. We've been here five minutes. All one lure too, right? Yep. 
Powerbond USA Junior. Hey, don't keep, don't let me slack in. I'm going to harvest. Man, this is on here. Oh, look down. look down! Now, if you guys remember, not too long ago, you were with me at another bridge, and we oh. caught some look down. I think Joe was like the look down magnet. That was look slam shady, though. The look downs were right. all over it. That's a cool looking fish. Also known as a moonfish, uh, they were really bright and shiny in the dark when the lights are on. Whoa. Um, probably the world's thinnest fish fillet. But uh, when we were kids, we used to eat them, and so obviously. Good, good eating, just very thin on the fillet. So Racking how, up the species. How do you pick out which piling to go to here underneath this massive bridge? Well, funny thing, right? Well, obviously we can't fish <laughs> those ten the down there man. because there's boats on them all. <laughs> but oh, oh, the yellow, yellow jack. jack, those are delightful. So when you when you go to the bridge, you just got to look at what your conditions are. And this part of the span is some of the deepest water but it also is some of the widest spans. So instead of having a small span where the current may or may not be too strong going through there, especially with this much wind, the wider span takes some of the pressure off the current and the deepest water we have, and this all structure spread out, and uh, it's allowing us to fish an area probably 100 feet long. So you can do the same technique on any of these spans but not all spans are the same. Some might have more structure underneath with uh, debris piles. Some might be deeper than others. So I picked this one because this has the most structure that we have. All these pilings you see are potential to hold a grouper, snapper, whatnot. Plus we got the chum block out and the chum dinger. So you might bring in a mackerel or a bluefish. So we're putting all, we're pulling all the stops out to try to get as many bites as we can. All right, Except Richard? for Richard. I don't know what Richard's, Richard's doing. Richard's still there. struggling up there. I got a couple on the on the senior. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh. Something bigger? This might be a little grouper here. Or big jack. Like a that was a good bite. Oh, pull the hook. Uh, can you see it? No, never got color. Hey, Luke is on fire. Richard is not, not really the, sure. Not jump in the water. <laughs> Put a massive snorkel on. Might be better spear fishing. Yeah, water temp is uh, 74 down here, so it's chilly. It was 72 closer to home and 74 down here at the bridge. It's a tarpon are starting to show up. Talk about the sawfish. <laughs> Yeah, so it's this crazy. time of year we have uh, the sawfish migrate in the spring and we happen to just have the opportunity to catch them close to home in Ala Mirad when we're tarpon fishing. Now, we don't target the sawfish. They're heavily protected. They are endangered species, but you catch them by accident. But what a cool creature. Some of those guys can be anywhere from 10 to 14 feet long. And uh, when they come up with that long beak, they're just amazing. Yeah, it was, prehistoric, I, I was, been around, part of the ray and shark family, if you will. Not afraid to eat a, a fresh dead bait and just a cool, cool creature. And to think about catching something that's 10, 12, 14 feet long, that's uh, that's once of a lifetime. Yeah, I was talking to your uh, Captain Eddie there and he said they got two in one day. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. So we catch the most of them March and April. And after, uh oh, uh oh. Luke's on again. Luke is just on fire. Bigger jack. Oh, yellow jack. Dude, that's dinner right there. Come on now. That's a giant. Those things are tasty, eh? This is fantastic. I got. I don't have to bait a hook, touch a fish. Sit here and watch Luke do it. Man. If you guys are wondering if the power prawn works like shrimp, it does. Yeah, this normally is normally uh, you'd have to sit here with how many dozens of live shrimp and sure. Just, you, you, and there's no doubt he ate the crap out of that one. Yeah, so make no mistake, this is only the this is only one worm, and he's been everything he's caught has been on one worm. While you guys are listening, I'm gonna snag a photo. Thing. Thing sandwich it right in his mouth. Oh, that's cool. All right, there's could be the thumbnail pick right there. 
Absolutely. That was awesome. All right, Richard, you switch up? Still going senior? Oh. Let me see what you got. You're getting some hits, put though, me to work. Right? Let me see if I can even just see that. Just go right in here. Well, it's a learning lesson. The size, the profile is quite important. I'm not a doctor, but I played one on TV. Is there a keep that guy? Yeah. No. No, he's good. All right, still, All still right. in action. Keep going. You we get got a little the exact banged same up, but you've already a dozen fish lure. in. That one's just an inch or so shorter. Yep. This Power Prawn USA Junior. Definitely getting your money's worth All out of that. Had quarter? The quarter ounce trout on it. Same, same thing. Not wild. Just an uh, inch bigger. It's making a huge difference. Killing that one. Oh, the big one there. Yeah, so do you have a small one? Oh. oh my gosh, I, I snagged a ray. Are you serious? A giant ray. Oh, that's, that's not good. Uh oh. This may be how <laughs> we how we lose good. this. Keep it out of the anchor line. Yeah, it's, like, it's like a six foot wingspan ray. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Let's see how the old BGMQ handles that. Oh, I just saw a giant wingspan. Oh. All right, Richard, here's your chance. Put it hey, Richard, get in the back in, get in the corner here, get in the pole position, see if you can Put catch one. Junior on and... Yeah, we're not going to go after that, so you're on your own. Either put a little heat on him, hope it comes off, or break him off. And it just jumped. Whoa, it are you kidding jumped. me? It went all the way out of the air? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I wish I would have had it on. All I saw did you get the, the did you get the land anyway? The splash? Dude, why can't you get a bite on that? I've got the big one on. I'm getting a ton of bites, but they're not committing to it like they are that little one. See right there. All right. Dude, he's wearing them out with that little one. I know. I All right, now Richard's got a. Uh, you don't have a junior on yet? No, Dude, what are you waiting for? I wanted to give it a test. It is not working. See, us fishermen are stubborn. But when you see someone on the same boat crushing it, <laughs> do as they do. All right, it's so Luke's re rigging. Hollywood's there. Jones Hollywood's and just Bush trying Light. to thaw out. <laughs> yeah, it's very windy and chilly for uh, April here in the East. But we're doing it. A lot of fish one junior. Yeah, that's crazy. How crazy that you snag that red. Or it might be, I don't know. That's why I was looking at the red. Oh man. Yes. I might have hooked a ray. But I'm gonna tell you in that scenario, he probably snagged him just swimming through here in the open water. A stingray is a bottom feeder. And when we chum for bonefish or shark fish and stuff with fresh dead bait, stingrays eat all the time. That was like a, that was a manta ray. Yeah, probably a spotted eagle ray. And it is, sometimes you do hook them in the wing by accident and they pull drag. So there's, uh, on the other side of the bridge here, there is three It's a popular more, spot today. Three more boats. So if you're wondering what to do, down in the Keys to get guaranteed action, literally just copy this. Luke's putting Dr. Juice on the, the juice. power box. Richard finally wised up and We'll probably catch a fish as very first. So the downside of fishing the same as Luke, Richard's going to learn that just because you got the same worm doesn't mean you catch the same fish. You got Dr. Juice on, Richard? No juice. Oh, no juice. Jeez. Let's see. Let's see how this goes now. Why don't you just kick yourself in the We're shed. 10 feet deep. We're fishing. What do you got, a quarter ounce? I did. I got three Oh, Luke's on again. The juice is loose. 
Oh. 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 What do you got? Oh. Oh, yeah, you did. Man, the amount of different jacks down here is crazy. No harm, no foul, though. One of the greatest tools in all of inshore fishing, the D-hooker. Mm -hmm. Industrial proof, reverse curve. We use this all the time. Man, one after another. What are you doing back here? Man, Luke is on fire. Jackerville. Jack attack. Ate the whole thing. Crushed it. Jack attack. Yeah, and so yesterday, similar, here comes a big sport fishing boat. You talk about some really good fun. I mean, you're getting a bite just about every single cast. We're, we're seconds slows down in between action. Oh, we got a big boat coming through, boys. Oh, yep. This is going to make it interesting. some wake because it's not rough enough. But yeah, yesterday it was similar, and uh, we went out and actually found a big school of mullet. Luke made a beautiful cast on them. And we uh, trolled for Barracuda, which was an absolute blast. Thankfully, this guy's slowing down. Look down! No, look down! And so we'll have a little video on that. What a cool fish. But it was a oh, blast. Oh, fumble! Thank goodness this guy uh, decided to slow down. I was like, this is not going to be fun. That's how we lost the cam the very first camera. It's in an area just like this. Camera was on a tripod, Mark. Big boat like that came through at full speed. And camera went into the water. Oh, no good. I am going to get down on that. Main level here. Boat's still yeah, a little bit of luck. We don't just still gonna get push off a big punished leg. here by this big boat. He saw he was on video. I'm going to slow down for these guys. That's good. That's the right thing to do. Beautiful boat. Yep. Doing the thing. Beautiful boat. All right, Lukey, let's make it happen again here. So what are you, what's the rest of your crew doing today? Where are they fishing? So the team is out today. Uh, we got eight or nine trips going and we got a lot of young kids. So they're tucked up behind an island somewhere, I'm sure, catching some mangrove snappers and trying to get some fun ahead sharks. Oh, I'm Richard's sure on. Well, Richard's Richard got a fish. Well, he doesn't know what to do. It's been so long. Yellow oh, Jack. Dude, look at that. There Yellow you go. Jack. You all right getting them off? So the boys are just trying to get it done, you know, up the, up tight to the shore somewhere in the back country a little bit. Uh, Rod bending, a lot of shrimp. Nice, Young kids, Richard. you got to keep them busy. And uh, the, yeah, some of the boys are running doubles today, so the afternoon maybe we'll get some sunshine. But I don't have anybody tarpon fishing this morning. Today is not the day for that. Nope. So instead, all right, we use our fake shrimp. They use real shrimp. We catch just as many fish. We've shocked multiple captains. What now? With this power problem. With the how effective it is. Sure. Remember the first time we went, you went Slam Shady? Yeah. that chum slick out for Spanish mackerel. And yeah, that was amazingly impressive. I mean, when you can catch a 8 to 10 or even 12 Spanish mackerel on one rubber worm before it finally gives in, gets cut up too bad, that's impressive. Nice. Because most soft plastics, most bucktails, most flies survive one, maybe two mackerels. But the shady was uh, was a game changer. And that was the now Z, with the that prawn. was the Z-Man version, to be clear, for Spanish mackerel. Yes, yes. the Z-Man for sure. But now with the power prawn, that's another bait option. Uh, I can see us using that more. Yeah, I mean, this is the USA one, which is not even as durable as the Brazilian. This is the re-rig. Just now, because of how it's picking up too Oh boy. Oh, I'd blame me too. Mm -hmm. A couple guys leaving. Had enough of this down here. Getting a little rough for the skiffs. This guys in the skiffs over here. I 
getting beat up in there. Yeah, it can happen down here today, that's for sure. So what are you doing, Luke? Going back, same thing? Absolutely. And these Power Prawn Junior USA, we now have them coming in, what, a seven pack? Yep. You get seven of those suckers? Heck of a deal. Say goodbye to your DOAs. Try the Power Prawn USA. That's a little logo there, a little theme. Say goodbye to your DOAs, Power Pond USA. I guarantee you will catch more fish on these than a little DOA shrimp. What happened, Richard? Get off. Ah. All right. Let's see if we can get a grouper out of here. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't got one yet. Look at all the fish in the chum slick. All the beer chubs the chum and stuff. Slick. Hey, walk back here and check this out. Chum fish, dinger doing his thing. You got a fish show? Yeah, you got a whole pile of Bermuda chubs, <laughs> oh probably some snappers back in there. Can you guys see them? Hopefully, oh yeah, you can't miss them now. They're all over. Those are Bermuda chubs. So cool. There's a little skiff. Tough day to be out here in that little boat. Yeah, fly fishing for a tarpon they're trying. Tough day, but yeah, we've had a couple insiders while we've been down here, it's been pretty cool. All right, Richard, this is your chance. All right. Catch a Mondo. You get hits? Oh, Luke's got one of the snapper on. Oh, Pat Richard's home! Right. Double. Mangrove, double, mango. double snappers. Double mango. Luke's close to a keeper, but not here. you go, mangrove snapper. All right. Well done. You just wonder how many fish are actually down here. And actually, Luke caught all his fish upwind of, or up current of the chum. So now Luke's fishing in the back. So let's yeah. see what he pulls up back there. Maybe a yellowtail or something. You never know what you might get. Uh oh, we got a drive by. That a boy. Yeah. You're yeah, man. You're officially on the podcast now. Oh, man, I'm not signing in. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What's happening? Go do it. Tell them who you are. <laughs> See it. Woo woo. Had a fellow guide come up and. Uh oh, say there's hello. Luke on. Luke's on. Right in his face. Oh, look at the size of this look down, dude. Holy mackerel. Bring that over here. Dude, that's crazy. Look at <laughs> that, dude. That is a beast. All right, look, I gotta get a picture of that one, man. That is crazy. If you guys are listening in, Luke just <laughs> caught a monster look down on the power prod. Dude, that's crazy. That is, that's a good fish, man. <laughs> that's the biggest nice. one I've ever seen. That thing is huge. Ready for more. Amazing. Yeah, those fish are so cool. And where there's one, there are many. I think a lot of times just sit there and circle around these big pilings. And... Yeah, and I mean, a lot of different fish do. I mean, groupers, snappers, all your ornamental fish, you know, parrot fish, pork fish, all your aquarium stuff that you see. Plus, you probably find a couple sheephead around here. And then your jacks and stuff will get in these channels and want to play in the current. And then the minute you deploy a chum block, as you can see the old chum dinger there, Bermuda chubs, different snappers, you don't even know what much. There's, there's so much open water here that mackerel, bluefish, a cobia, you don't ever know what might show up out here. This water is moving through here in a couple knots. 
It's 10 feet deep. It's got good color to it. You can't see the bottom. It's all churned up, which is really good for us. And the bite is solid. Yep. Even Richard's catching a couple. <laughs> and ironically, this is the same type of area we come to go diving for lobster. In yes, lobster yeah. Coming up here. And uh, so we've seen what's down there in some of these spots. And I will tell you, it can be spooky some days to be diving. Down. Oh, for sure. The Goliath grouper might get your attention. Oh, you might see sharks. some different sharks. And even the tarpon will spook you sometimes because all of a sudden you turn around and there's a massive five tarpon, tarpon checking in front you of out. your face. And you're like, whoa. But the Goliath grouper, they ain't scared of you. No. And man, they are just massive. That spooks me every time I see one down there. And normally it's when you least expect it. Yeah, and a lot of these bridges, you've been here a long time, and they have rubble, rubble piles with them from prior construction, broken piling, storm damage, whatnot. So you don't really know what's on the bottom. Yep. So you can go down there and find tangle of rebar, find a bunch of concrete, some broken bulkheads, which just creates an amazing habitat for yep. lobsters and snappers and so just all kinds of things. that's laid on top of each other, and the lobster just stack underneath there. Absolutely. And it makes sense. Back in the day, they... Hey, let's just drop this stuff in. We don't have to take it all back with us. Pay for some good structure. All right, Lukey, you slow up. Yeah, just little small things. I can't get the hook. Yeah. We'll go. Uh, well, we'll put one of you guys back on the up current side and see if you get back on the bite there. Cause right. otherwise, we'll close it out soon. I think this gives everyone a, a good idea of how to make it happen. And we've uh, just been sitting here anchored up. And yeah, that bite was solid. Yeah. Real that bite was solid. All on rubber worm, too. That's just amazing. That's good for the shrimp business. You guys are listening <laughs> in. Rubber worms means any kind of artificial lure. Yeah, Hollywood, that's Disney. We call them rubber worms. That's right. <laughs> there it is. Rubber Fish worms. on. Oh, oh catch and release. All right, we'll close it out. Guys, make sure to stay tuned for more. We'll have some new insider reports. Got some new tackle coming. If you haven't purchased your PowerPron USA, both sizes. Do it while you can. They continue to sell out. We've, uh, as we're recording this, Tower Fund USA Junior is not available because we're out. And uh, we don't actually, it's a packaging issue of all things. The torture never stops. It never stops. But then again, by the time this goes live, you uh, you might have the opportunity to do it. So that's all at fishdrawn.com. Insider members get 20% off or more. And uh, we appreciate you guys big time. Stay tuned in the next episode. Peace, we out. Peace out, Hollywood. Woo!